Hey, what's up, everyone? Today we're going to be talking about Lechet Lear's principle, and um, th this principle is a really important part of equilibrium. So Lechet Lear's principle tells you that when a stress is imposed on a system at equilibrium, the system will work to oppose the stress. So let's say you have a a uh, system where reactants are in equilibrium with products, and you're at equilibrium. Well, if you add some sort of stress onto the system the reaction is gonna to work to oppose the stress. So we're gonna look at three different types of stresses and how they affect the equilibrium. Uh, the first one is a change in concentration, second is a change in pressure, and third is a change in temperature. Let's start with concentration. So let's say you have a change in concentration. You have a reaction where A is in equilibrium with B, and at equilibrium, your reaction looks like this. Um, it's four of these A molecules and four of these B molecules. And let's say I add a stress onto the system. Let's say I add uh, two of these A molecules. How is the system going to react to this stress? Well, the system asks itself, I've gained more A. How do I get rid of some of this extra reactants? And so how do you get rid of reactants? Well, you increase your forward reaction. So the reaction is going to, the, the system is going to say, I'm going to increase my forward reaction so I can balance out um, the, the equation here, the equilibrium. So it's going to take one of your A molecules and turn it into the B molecule. And so what happens is that if you look at your equilibrium constant, your Kc is 5 over 5 uh, in the uh, reaction after the stress, and your Kc is 4 over 4 prior when it was at equilibrium. So as you can see, your a change in concentration does not actually change your equilibrium constant. Your equilibrium constant is still one in both of these cases. So if you add a, a stress like adding more reactants, when you add more reactants, the forward reaction increases to use up some of those reactants and produce products. On the other hand, if you were to add more products, the reaction would increase the reverse reaction to get rid of some of those products and form more of your reactants. So that's how a change in concentration works. Uh, increase reactants, you increase the forward reaction. Increase products, you increase the reverse reaction. And your equilibrium constant does not change. Um, let's go to the next one, which is a change in pressure. Um, let's say you have this uh, reaction where A is in equilibrium with B and C, and both, uh, all three, A, B, and C, are uh, gases. One important thing to keep in mind is that the more moles you have, the greater your pressure is. So if you had a, a system with just your reactants uh, and a system with just your products, your product, uh, your product system would have twice the pressure of your reactant system because there are twice as many moles of gas on the product side. So let's say you have this reaction, uh, or this system, and this system's at equilibrium. You have three of your reactant, uh, reactant molecules and two each of your product molecules. Let's say I add a stress. Let's say I increase the pressure by decreasing the volume, so I make the container smaller. Uh, what this has done is that it's increased the pressure, and this is a stress. The system asks itself, how do I get rid of the stress? How do I decrease the pressure? The way you decrease the pressure is by having less of less uh, moles in your system. You have less particles. And so what's going what's gonna to decrease the number of particles in the system? Increasing the reverse reaction or increasing the forward reaction? Well, in this case, increasing the reverse reaction would decrease the pressure. If you took two of those uh, product molecules and you turned it back into a reactant molecule, you would end up with less particles in your system and that would work to uh, decrease the pressure. So in this case, your uh, reverse reaction would increase. On the other hand, let's say you uh, decrease the pressure by putting all these molecules in a bigger uh, container. The system asks itself, okay, I've decreased my pressure, how do I, how do I make it high again? Uh, a stress has, has been imposed that is lowering the pressure. I need to increase the pressure. How do I increase the pressure? Well, in this case, you would increase the forward reaction to uh, have more of these moles in the chamber.
that would work to increase the pressure so uh, yeah depending on your reaction you might be increasing the reverse or the forward reaction based on whether or not you've increased or decreased your pressure this will change the equilibrium constant but there's another way of changing the pressure that won't change the equilibrium constant let's say we have the same reaction and at equilibrium it looks like this you have two a molecules and two each of your product molecules and i increase the pressure by adding more gas i add more of argon and there's a specific reason why i chose argon argon is an inert gas inert gases don't uh are not really chemically reactive so they won't react with your reactants or your products so what this does is that it increases the pressure of the system without causing any other reactions. Um, this increase in pressure does not change the concentrations that concentration or partial pressures that your reactants and products are in. So inert gases do not affect your equilibrium. That's the second way of increase of uh, changing the pressure, um, and this way of increasing the pressure does not affect equilibrium. Uh, inert gases include gases like helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. These are your noble gases. They're inert, so they don't actually react with your reactants or products. They don't cause any other reactions to happen. They purely just change the pressure. Um, and so this way of, sorry, this way of changing the pressure does not affect equilibrium, but the other one does. Um, so that was change in pressure. Let's look at the last one, which is a change in temperature. Let's say you have a reaction where A is in equilibrium with B, and our delta H is 100 kilojoules per mole. Your delta H uh, is the net energy change of your reaction. So what this delta H tells you is that your B molecule is 100 kilojoules per mole more energetic than your A molecule. And so if we wanted to add this energy uh, into our chemical equation, we could put the uh, the heat or the energy on the reactant side. Since the products have more energy than the reactants, you would add the heat to the reactant side. And so let's say you have a reaction where you have a system and we increase the, the temperature on this system. What would happen? Well, the system needs to find a way to decrease the temperature. Um, in order to decrease the temperature, you have to use up your heat. And so what would happen is that if you wanted to increase the temperature, if you wanted to decrease the temperature on this system, you would increase the forward reaction. The forward reaction will, will use up some of that heat and it'll counterbalance the stress that you've imposed on the system by increasing the temperature. So in this case, when you have heat in your reactant side, you would increase the forward reaction to decrease that temperature and mitigate that stress. On the other hand, if you had the same reaction, but this case, your, del your delta H was negative 100 kilojoules per mole, it means that your reactant is 100 kilojoules per mole more energetic than your product. So in this case, you could add the heat or the energy to the product side. And let's say we increase the temperature on this system. What's gonna happen? Well, the system asks, how do I get rid of some of that extra energy? And the way it does that is by increasing the reverse reaction. The reverse reaction will use up the B and the heat, and it'll produce more of your A reactant molecule. So increasing the temperature on this system increases the reverse reaction. The entire principle uh, with Lash leaders principle is that you have to see, um, given the stress, you have to see uh, what is going to mitigate that stress. Um, in this case, if you add heat, you need to find out a way to decrease the heat. And if you decrease the heat, you need to find a way to increase the heat. And uh, changing temperature does change the equilibrium constant. So we saw in uh, changing the concentration that your equilibrium constant doesn't change. And in certain times when you increase the pressure, the equilibrium constant does not change. On the other hand, in temperature, changing in temperature is always going to change the equilibrium constant. Um, and that was Lesha Clear's principle. I hope this is helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And I hope to see you later. Thank you for watching.